and so he formulated a great counter to those bears and the griffins. Uh, a lot of times people see kind of unorthodox strategies and they try to hard counter as fast as possible because it makes them nervous. For instance, let's say you see a chimera, a chimera. A, I'm, I don't know how to pronounce it, I apologize. I'm going to say chimera. Let's say you see a chimera, one, just one, and you're playing, I don't know, orc. What I'm going to do as an orc player, I'm going to flip out. I'm going to be like, oh crap, like chimera, I am f screwed. So, I go and I build a BCR and I mass 12 bats. Well, my opponent has only one chimera, so I kill that chimera with two bats, and my other 10 bats are killed by dryads. Like, who won that skirmish? I killed the chimera, I lost 12 bats, and I wasted all that time and all those resources. People do that, people overreact. Because people get in the idea, okay, I'm playing undead as night elf. He's going to go gargoyles. I'm going to prepare for gargoyles. And so when you don't see that, it makes you very nervous. It freaks you out, like I keep saying. So you overreact, overproduce a unit, and open yourself up for a hard counter. For instance, Levin. It really wasn't his choice, because Shriek did such a good job of tearing Levin apart piece by piece that there really wasn't much he could do. So, he opened himself up. He kind of got too dependent on his bears, and then the bears were dismembered, literally. And that's GG right there. So obviously, it was very important for Levin uh, that these towers were there at the expansions. Uh, Levin could not actually attack Shriek's bases and its expansions because of the sheer number of towers and even with you know, a, a far greater unit advantage the towers were close to insurmountable. I realize, you know, as a human player, I realize how frustrating it is for other races to cope with the towers and to tell you the truth there probably isn't that much of a hard counter of a counter to uh, to deal with these towers. Now, I'm a commentator I, I try to show you guys different ways to deal with different strategies and to tell you the truth I'm almost at a loss when your opponent is as good as Shriek and he's building towers all over the place after the first you know, expansion or two there's not much you can do you know I maybe uh, when I was a commentator for the member section you know I got maybe 50 or 60 downloads per audio uh, now hopefully I'll get quite a few more but by no means am I even going to communicate with a, a small fraction of the people who play Warcraft and so I cannot teach them all the human players in the world not to be gay and not to use gay strategies and so for all you other players out there you know who get frustrated with mass gyros, mass mortars, mass tanks mass towers either play human and and unleash that uh, crap on other people or you can try to find a counter and then once you find that counter you know, come tell me and we'll talk as far as the tanks go it is very not easy but the tanks are counterable uh, with the right you know builds and stuff for instance Levin started to do this later in the game but it was a bit too late uh, what you can do is start building Ancients of War at your expansions and then uproot them. Uprooted trees have heavy armor, meaning that the siege damage will it won't deal um, extra damage to the Ancients of War. It'll just deal you know the full damage. Um, and Ancients of War have a lot of hit points, can move around uh, if slowly, but they still can move around. And they uh, deal decent damage. The biggest thing and the most important thing that you have to realize is that the Ancients of War don't take up any population. They are count as buildings and so even when all your moon walls are destroyed and you can't produce another unit until you build five more moon walls, you can still build Ancients of War. And I think that had he capitalized on that a little bit more, he might have been able to 
keep around some of his moon wells and maybe build a few counters to these griffins that arose later in the game. So, I think I've covered pretty much all that I've wanted to cover from that game. I hope you guys aren't too, too bored of me. Uh, now I'm going to go into uh, some ungame related stuff, maybe future audios, whatever else. And so if you don't care about that sort of thing, then you guys can go on and close out of this audio. Uh, I enjoyed talking with you. For the rest of you, um, I've pretty much decided how I'm going to handle my audios in the future. First, I realize there are two groups of people. The group of people that want to be entertained and the group of people that want to actually learn and get better. And of course there are subgroups who fall somewhere along that spectrum. Now what I plan to do, and I, I, by no means am I promising to do this because I, I do have time issues at the moment, but um, I would enjoy to commentate upon two games for you every commentary. One game will be serious, most likely a pro game, go to game, with you know a real life strategy. Uh, not real life, I mean, uh, how should I say this? Uh, ladder worthy, a strategy that the pro would do. The second game is going to be a m bit more fun for me to commentate upon. It's going to be hopefully with interesting strategies. Maybe I'll get some random teams, some arranged team, free for all. Uh, no Dota. I don't do Dota. Uh, but just anything really uh, that strikes my fancy. And so that's where we'll go crazy and have a party in the commentary. And so I think that I'll be able to satisfy both uh, everyone's taste, everyone's requirements for any potential audio. With that being said, I need your help. It is very difficult to come across uh, numerous interesting creative games. And so here's where you come in. Uh, if you guys could PM me, send me replays, uh, preferably upload them to the WC Replays uh, replay database, and then PM me the link to those replays so that I don't have to mess with email attachments or anything like that. But yeah, just email me, PM me all your stuff, your your best strategy, your favorite strategy, it's just a fun game, uh, tell me you know, what it's about and then I will or potentially will use that in my commentary. Of course I'll give you shout outs if you send me PMs or whatever too. So it's a win-win situation. Now this is going to be the last thing I say. I've talked way too long. I'm probably killed most of you out of boredom but I have one desire and it's it's strange it's strange so don't hold off and let me finish um, have you guys ever seen the movie hero it's it was you know dubbed over in English whatever else but it's a movie and I don't want to ruin it for you guys but towards the end of the movie basically a lot of archers a lot of ranged units, if you will, uh, fire at this one person. Uh, like, And you see, the cinematography is great, because you see literally thousands of arrows arcing towards this person. It's just, it's a great visual effect. And so, I, I was thinking about it, and I've been thinking about it for a few months, I really want someone to do that in a game. Uh, whether it be a melee game, or like a, a real game, a a real map, not some user map settings game or custom game or something like that. But seriously, like just get 80 feet of archers and whatever else, and I just want to see it. So again, if you could send me that replay, along with uh, any other replays you have in mind, I will definitely, definitely give you a shout out for that. And it could work for any race, you know, it could be rifles or fiends or... Um, Rifles, fiends, archers, headhunters. That's the one. Uh, headhunters, too. So, give me that, and uh, I will give you sweet, sweet love in my next commentary. That is going to be it for me, Talamasca. I hope you enjoyed my first ever Warcraft replays or WC replays commentary. And there it is. I'm signing out. 
see you again or talk to you again soon. Peace.